So what I'll be showing is a very basic uh, Hello World uh, application that will be uh, deployed in a container to the OpenShift container uh, cluster management solution. And um, essentially, we're going we're to build it and uh, pretend we're testing it and deploy it and show how it works with our uh, GitLab integration. So I've just imported um, a very basic application here into GitLab that's so made up of two files, a server RRB, which is just a Ruby server that's sitting out Hello World, and a Docker file, which is what we're going to use to uh, bundle up the application into a container. So it contains um, our base image that we're, we're going to use to bring in all those dependencies we need to run our application. So in this case, the Ruby base image. It's going to copy in our files. It's going to expose our web application on port 5000. And then it's going to actually run our server. So in this demo, everything is blank. But we're going to assume that uh, this is our application that we've been iterating on for a while. Within GitLab, we've been working on creating new merge requests. We've made new issues, iterated on work, created some branches, and uh, maybe released some tags already. So we're going to pretend this is like a already, we've already done some work in this application. Next, what we need to hook up is our testing solution, our, our continuous integration solution. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that next. So under the settings tab in GitLab for your project, under the CI CD pipelines, we have uh, this page where you can set up your CI runners. Now, if your company had already set up shared runners, you may not have to do this. In this case, we're going to set up a very specific runner for this project, and we're going to make use of um, OpenShift to run our CI builds. Uh, using OpenShift or any Kubernetes cluster is uh, pretty advantageous for our CI runners because it's very easy to set up, and then you get uh, the ability to make uh, to run parallel parallel CI jobs with very minimal setup. So here's my OpenShift origin UI. I'm going to log into it. And here I've already created uh, two namespaces, the www namespace, which is where I'm going to be deploying our Hello World application. And it's currently blank. And the GitLab infrastructure namespace, which is where I'll be deploying my CI runners. And it's where the jobs Will, our, our pipeline jobs will be running. The namespaces are separated so that we can keep the permissions of the different, uh, the different pods running uh, separate more easily. So I've already added the GitLab runner template as a template to OpenShift, so any namespace could, uh, could add a runner to their namespace here. Uh, so I'll just load it up here. And in order to run it, I just need a, a few um, input variables. So I need the address of the GitLab instance, which I can find from this, the pipelines page here. And I need the registration token that tells uh, the runner um, which project it's allowed to uh, associate with and identifies it to GitLab. So here's uh, here's the deployment running for the GitLab runner. So OpenShift has uh, taken our deployment config and it's creating and booting up a pod, which is which ha has our container within it. So if I go into the pod, we'll see that the container is running uh, a Docker image, which is our GitLab runner application. And um, here in OpenShift, it's assigned a few other things, like it's given it uh, a cluster IP address. Um, it's monitoring the state, and we've also um, have uh, various mounts and sequence mounted automatically. So this runner has registered itself with GitLab. So if we refresh the page, we'll see it show up. So what this runner does is it will, it's going to be pulling GitLab for any CI, CD jobs to run. And then what it'll do is it'll bring up new pods here in this namespace to run those jobs.
So now that we have a runner, we can set up our, um, our CI CV jobs. So there's the Setup CI button in GitLab. We'll click on that and we get this uh, GitLab CI YAML template, which is where we define the various build stages and, um, and define the jobs that make up our continuous integration pipeline. I'm going to show off the, the uh, Bash example. Even though this isn't a Bash exploitation, this kind of shows the easiest example here. So you're able to define uh, an image, a Docker image specifically, um, to use as the default for all the different tasks. So that's going to define all the dependencies to run your CI task, not necessarily your application, but the dependencies needed to run your jobs that we'll define below. We have <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a before script uh, that runs before each job and after script. Uh, we have a build stage in this example with a single job to build your application. And then we have a test stage that we've defined two test jobs in that will run in parallel. And then a deploy stage that just has a single job at the end. So this example template I'll show off is the, the Docker one to just show an example of how you can uh, build a Docker image um, using CI. So the dependency here is Docker, the Docker image itself, which brings in the Docker binary. And this does a Docker build and pushes it, in this case, to uh, GitLab's own built-in registry in this example. So I'm going to go back to the uh, Bash example and just jump ahead. And I actually um, cut a little bit out here, but all I did was change the images to a Ruby image and the deploy image to the Docker image. So I'll create a new branch and commit this. And we're just going to use this as an example of a, a CI pipeline. So over here in OpenShift, the runner uh, picked up the fact that there was a job and brought up a new pod uh, that had the Ruby image. If we go back and we look at our pipelines in GitLab, we can see we have one running pipeline. The build is finished and two parallel test jobs have kicked off, which we can see in OpenShift. And then the final with the Docker image is the deploy job. So this doesn't this was just echoing things, so it's not wasn't really doing anything, but it shows the the uh, the whole pipeline um, in a way that you can make use of the parallel jobs and easily set up CI. So next, we're going to set up the actual uh, integration we have with Kubernetes and OpenShift. So we have a Kubernetes OpenShift integration listed here. Um, so we're going to say, define which namespace we want to deploy our application to. We're going to put in the uh, API URL of the Kubernetes cluster, or in OpenShift's case, the OpenShift cluster. And we need a service token to give GitLab access to um, make new pods and deploy. In this case, we're going to just grab it from the UI. This is just for an example case you would want to create your own service user and grab a service token that lasts a little longer. The UI one expires when I log out. So now that that is uh, set up, we should be able to go back to our project. And now there's a set up auto deploy. Um, button beside our setup CI button. So we can click on that. And we're back in our GitLab CI YAML. And this time we have both an OpenShift and a Kubernetes uh, example. So the OpenShift one um, includes uh, a dependency on an image that has the OC binary. Um, but we're not going to show this one today. That one makes use of uh, the OpenShift's uh, build pipelines. But we're going to show uh, just raw Kubernetes, which also works with the OpenShift um, image. So we have the image defined as the, uh, in this case, Kubernetes deploy, which basically is just bringing in the kubectl as our de dependency. Um, I'm going to change it here to OpenShift deploy, which also adds the OC binary to this example image. And then these images are meant as examples, and uh, uh, you sh we want you to uh, be able to take them and change them and make them uh, your own for your own uh, <clears throat> needs for deployment. So I switched to my own, which had uh, an updated binary for the version I'm running. 
The only other thing I have to change in this example is the cube domain to be um, a wildcard domain that I'm using. In this case, apps.yourdomain.work, so that's where I'm going to deploy my various uh, versions of the application. I'll just create this as a merge request so I can show off the merge request UI. So uh, we have a pending pipeline and uh, we have our changes that we can comment on. Over in OpenShift, our pipeline is kicked off and we're running our uh, build image, which we can see if we come in and look at the pipeline in GitLab. So we have build running and then in this case, we're going to be running a review deployment next. So the review uh, job is kicked off to make the deployment. If we jump in, we can see it's going to uh, create the new application, uh, deploy it, wait for it to roll out, and then expose, expose the route in uh, OpenShift to the uh, router and load balancer. So if we go back into our namespace where we're deploying these, we can see we now have a service, a config, and a pod started. In GitLab, if we look at our merge request that we had set up, we see we now have our pipeline having passed. We have a third stage that didn't run, which is actually the cleanup stage, which closes this uh, deployment, and it will run when the branch is removed. Because uh, in this case, what we've done is we've deployed a review application. So the URL has been somewhat generated. It's not your final URL, and it's specific to this branch, this merge request. This isn't our master branch. So we're able to now uh, review this application using OpenShift and uh, leave comments, stop the environment when we want to. And uh, there's a couple other things we can do. So we can actually go into the environments tab and we can access the terminal from GitLab as well. You can do this directly from OpenShift as well, but we can debug the running application from GitLab. So if I go in, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show an updated deployment. So uh, we're going to go into the branch um, and edit the edit the server.rb and change what it's going to output, output from Hello World to be just Hello OpenShift. We'll deploy that to our same branch so it shows up in that merge request. We can see a new pipeline has started. Under our changes, we have two commits. We have our old CI YAML file that we added before and our new change. And in our pipeline, we're running a, another build of the Docker file and then another push to deploy the review app. So back in our infrastructure namespace, we have the build just finished. Next, it'll kick off the, the task that will be responsible for doing the uh, deployment of the review app. And over in our actual namespace where we're deploying this application, we should see the uh, old application start to shut down the new one uh, be triggered for starting up. So there it goes. So now it has um, two pods that it's running, one of, with the old image, one with the new, and it's actively working on scaling down the old one. And OpenShift has already taken care of removing the old one from the load balancer. Um, so even though the pod isn't shut down, it's not accessible at this point. So if I refresh the domain where we had our review app, we see it's been updated. And our pipeline is finished.
we can go ahead and merge this in and we'll see the, uh, the review app close. So this will trigger the cleanup job. which will take care of shutting down this particular review app. 